Hi everyone, my name is Claudia Dinoy from Green Delta and this presentation is about an integrated life cycle sustainability assessment in mine water balance management. The mining industry uses a massive amount of water for ore mining and processing and this implies that different water sources need to be considered from fresh water to process water to water that is used in the plant and also water losses. And often the water cycle is quite unpredictable also due to seasonal variations. In this context, the EIT Raw Materials Serene project proposed a dynamic predictive solution for a more sustainable water balance management. Therefore, it proposed a water balance management system made of remote sensing, data analytics and Internet of Things in order to monitor with real-time information water qualities and quantities to manage different operational conditions and to predict and evaluate different investment options and process optimization. For the sustainability assessment of this project, we had two main goals. The first one was to establish an integrated sustainability assessment framework. The second one was to understand if this technically improved solution was also more sustainable. So we validated this framework through a case study on Nordic mining. The sustainability assessment combined different methodologies, starting from a sustainability hotspot screening that was used as input for all the other analysis. So from social sustainability to risk assessment to life cycle modeling for the environmental LCA and life cycle costing to value assessment. Risk assessment was used as input for life cycle assessment, but also for the value assessment. Value assessment is related to the investigation of the economic benefits, risks and costs of the investment for this solution and is currently out of the scope of this presentation. We started with a case study in an open pit mine in Nordic countries. And immediately we realized that there was a high data confidentiality problem. So only data on site water balance and consumables for the wastewater treatment were available. This resulted in a quite simple model where mainly water flows were added and where we also added the serene solution made of the monitoring stations, sensors and batteries. So at this point we realized that we could miss some indirect impacts happening in the plant or anyway some burdens shifting. So we thought that we needed a more complete model. In order to achieve this, we decided to prepare a generic copper mine model that could overcome these site-specific data gaps. All data were taken from literature, so quite generic data, but this enabled a more complete model. And uh, all basic processes are included, so more mining, processing, waste rock management, tailings management, and to this, again, the serene solution was added. Therefore, for this generic life cycle model on copper mining, it was very important to understand which changes could be introduced by the water balance management system. And based on expert judgment, we highlighted and detected that less raw water uh, could be used on site, less water could be discharged, less chemicals also, and energy for ore processing and wastewater treatment, uh, an improved plant performance, so better concentrate grade, and in turn energy needed for pumping the recycled water back to the plant could increase. If we compare the impacts with and without the water balance management system for the copper generic model, we can see that with the management system, we have an improvement in all environmental impact categories that are considered, especially up to 6% for ionizing radiation and climate change due to the reduced use of energy and for water resource depletion due to less raw water intake and less water needed for cooling purposes during electricity generation. But as we saw that the improvement was quite limited and anyway below what we expected, so up to 6%, we thought that um, it could be more meaningful to consider which risks could be reduced instead of everyday impacts. So how can the novel water balance management system affect the environmental risk management on site?
For this, we decided to go for a site-specific risk assessment by applying a fault tree analysis. So different uh, risk scenarios were considered from dam failure to uh, groundwater pollution exceeding permission limit on water quality. And for this, it was performed the fault tree analysis. For example, considering this exceeding permission limit risk on water quality, uh, this is our top event, the specified event. And uh, we started investigating different causes and pathways that could lead individually or altogether to the top event. In this case, high, for example, high intake of raw water can lead to a long lasting high load of substances and hence to the top event, so to exceeding the permit limit. Based then on these impact pathways and the mechanism of harm, we decided to include the risk scenarios in the life cycle models based on a key question. So what would be the impact if a given risk occurred? In the case of the exceeding uh, permission limit risk, for example, it was important to consider the contaminant content in the tailings ponds in water and also check the environmental permit to understand which substances need to be monitored. And in this case, the key question is what if the substance concentration in the discharge water exceeds, for example, by 30%, the limits from the environmental permit. What would be the impacts? In order to understand this, we had to then model uh, some risk-based processes in the site-specific life cycle model, hence representing these processes. As you can see here, for the risk scenario exceeding permission limit, related to water quality, we have um, a specific risk process representing this event of risk. And here we added the different outputs, so the contaminants that we found in the environmental permit that need to be monitored, and that in this case we assume that they could exceed by 30%, for example, the, the limits. And then this process was added as an input to the tailings process. This slide shows a comparison of impacts with the water balance management system in place and no risks occurring against impacts if risk scenarios occur without any management system in place. And uh, the results show that uh, main benefits are expected for toxicity categories, mainly human toxicity and freshwater ecotoxicity, if this system, water management system, can prevent or at least reduce these risks, especially for the risk scenario on exceeding permission limit for water quality, given that impacts could be quite severe, quite heavy for ecosystems and humans. If we consider costs with and without management system, we can see that costs with water balance systems are reduced for most of the processes at the mine, especially flotation, up to 20% due to reduced energy needs. And on the other hand, we can see that uh, costs increase with the water balance management system for tailings management due to higher recycled water that needs to be pumped back, so higher cost for pumping this water and probably cleaning this. Besides costs and environmental impacts and risks, it's also important to think about the relation between the water management system and the social license to operate. So how this management system can influence the trust and social acceptance that is granted by the community to mining project exploration or mining operations in general. So if we think about different SLO factors that we found in literature for Nordic mining, the water management system can be quite beneficial for this acceptance. In particular, for water quality, water management and environmental impacts, given this real-time monitoring of water loads and water quality, but also, for example, for employment and regional development, given that new jobs are expected for monitoring stations and maintenance, and that also more remote regions could be accessed than with this real-time monitoring and operations. And also, for example, uh, we expect uh, better impacts on 
um, the water management for other sectors, so related, for example, to reindeer farming or tourism, that also need uh, water resources as uh, the mining operations in the area. This combined assessment framework enabled the evaluation of different types of results from qualitative to quantitative, diverse sustainability aspects, uh, site-specific data, impacts, risks. And this was important for the interpretation of results in a multidimensional context. Meaning that uh, with this framework, we demonstrated the importance of communicating and evaluating values, costs, risks, and impacts of an improved water balance management system that could be a bridge builder between different stakeholders, local communities, technology providers. But it's important also to remember that the extent to which the water balance management system benefits can be achieved always needs to be evaluated locally, so specifically for each site. However, an integration of all methodologies was not always or not fully possible. Because of different levels of detail of different methodologies, primary data for site-specific risk assessment or generic data for LCA, different data types, qualitative, quantitative, different modeling decisions due to different data availability, so different system boundaries, and different underlying tools, LCA software, Excel files, diagrams, as there were different partners involved. And all this calling for methodological and tool development in order to achieve a more consistent framework for life cycle sustainability assessment. Thank you. And as we are in the session on the marine environment, I would like to mention that we have been working on the PLEX project for a plastic litter extension for the EcoInvent database that will be released soon via the Nexus website. And if you want to have more information, you can check the links and references in this slide.